In previous videos, we've seen how the sample size relates to the width of a confidence interval. So generally, we've been seeing that as our sample size increases, our confidence interval narrows. So now an intuitive thing to ask would be, well, can we choose the width of a confidence interval and then select the sample size from there? So that's what we'll be doing in this video. So we'll be talking about choosing sample sizes. And in this video in particular, we'll be talking about proportions. Later we'll talk about if we want to have a confidence interval for a mean. All right, so our goal in this video is that we want to have a confidence interval that's no wider than distance, sorry, no wider than 2D, and we're trying to estimate a proportion P from a binomial distribution. So we're trying to figure out what sample size should we use. All right, so here's a theorem that we'll be proving in a minute. The theorem says that if we have an estimator x over n for a, a, pro, a proportion B in a P in a binomial distribution, then in order for x over n to have a 100 times 1 minus alpha percent probability of being within distance D of proportion P, the sample size should be no smaller than n equals Z alpha over 2 squared divided by 4D squared. And Z alpha over 2 is a value so that if we have Z being a standard normal distribution, the probability that a standard normal is greater than or equal to Z alpha over 2 equals alpha over 2. So here's our standard normal. And then here's Z alpha over 2. And we're looking for what is this Z alpha over 2 so that we know that we'll have alpha over 2 in that tail. All right, so we would just use our Q norm for a table to get that Z alpha over 2 once the confidence level 1 minus alpha is specified. All right, so if we want to go ahead and prove this um, theorem, we can start there. So we'll be using this notation, Z is a standard normal distribution. And a key thing to this proof will be the distribution of our estimator x over n. So we're going to use x over n minus p divided by the standard error. We're going to use the fact that this is approximately a standard normal distribution. All right, so for our proof, let's start up at the top. Our goal is to have um, our estimator x over n to have a proportion, to have a probability 100 times 1 minus alpha probability of being within a distance d of p. So if we want to translate that sentence to math, then that means we're looking to make sure that um, we're within d of x over n minus p. All right, so this is saying that x over n minus p should be at least negative d away and at most d away. And we want that to happen with probability 1 minus alpha. So that's why we set that equal to 1 minus alpha. All right, so if we go inside this probability and divide everything by the same quantity, that's totally fair. So we'll divide negative d by something, x over n minus p by the same something, and d by the same something. And we're going to be strategic about it so that this something looks like this. We're going to divide everything by the standard error. All right, so we've divided everything by the standard error. So now we can use this approximation. So we know that this thing is approximately standard normal. So we can say that this 
probability is approximately the probability of this being less than or equal to a standard normal being less than or equal to this piece. All right, so this is where we are, but now we're going to notice that the alpha over 2 plays a role here. So we know that negative z alpha over 2 less than or equal to a standard normal less than or equal to z alpha over 2. That has probability 1 minus alpha. So we know this is equal to 1 minus alpha, and we also know that we have this other probability that we've set up to be equal to 1 minus alpha. So then that means that this is approximately equal to this. And this quantity similarly is approximately equal to z alpha over 2. All right, so if we rearrange all this that we are solving for n, then we get that n is approximately z alpha over 2 squared divided by d squared times p times 1 minus p. All right, but of course, the whole thing is we don't know what p is. We're looking for p. So we need to think about, okay, if we're trying to go with the worst case scenario, so that even if p times 1 minus p is the biggest thing possible, we'll still have a big enough sample size that we can have a confidence interval no wider than 2d and be estimating our proportion, then what we can do to make p times 1 minus p as big as possible, worst case scenario, we will use p equal to 0.5. So if we you know, just use some calculus or something like that, we could see that p times 1 minus p is maxed out when p is equal to 0.5. So if we have z alpha over 2 squared divided by d squared times 0.5 times 0.5, that's the same thing as z squared alpha over 2 divided by d squared, divided by 4 also. So again, we just used the worst case scenario for what p could be, because that would make p times 1 minus p as big as possible, so that we would still be sure to be meeting our goal. Um, and one quick note about this, we should round up. So probably when you get this number, it'll be a decimal. You should round up so that you can make sure that you have a uh, sample size that is sufficiently large.